Hey there, welcome to Liftoff PM. My name is Kevin Wei. I'm a senior product manager at Amazon, and I spent the last three years helping PMs land great offers as an interview coach. On this channel, I share lessons on how to tackle the different kind of PM questions you will face, as well as how to avoid the most common pitfalls. And in this video, we're gonna explore the different kind of PM positions you'll encounter as you're applying for a product manager job. So let's get started. From consumer to enterprise, each role requires a different set of skills and come with different expectations. And just like how the roles and responsibilities of a PM differ from company to company, the roles and responsibilities of a PM in the same company differ from team to team. So let's dive into seven types of product managers. But before we do that, I do want to highlight that even though there are differences between these kind of PMs, there are also commonalities across all of these. No matter the PM position, you'll need to be an advocate for your user, whether that's an end user, publisher, advertiser, or platform client, define the product vision and roadmap, and communicate and collaborate across functions. At the end of the day, all PMs are responsible for driving results. That could be user engagement or direct impact of the company's PNL. Now let's talk about the different roles. Consumer PM. Consumer PMs work on products that touch end users like Google Photos or Facebook Messenger. These PMs are responsible for the development and ongoing success of consumer products, conducting market research to understand the consumer needs and trends, and building the right experiences for users. So in this role, you'll work much more closely with user research and design than you might in other PM roles. Ads PM. As an ads PM, you'll oversee the development and success of a company's advertising products. In the ads world, there's a supply side and a demand side. The supply side refers to publishers who have advertising inventory, and these could be like news sites or mobile apps. They basically carve out an area for ads to appear and then make this advertising inventory available to advertisers. On the other hand, the demand side refers to advertisers looking to buy placements to reach their target audience. This interaction between the supply side and demand side creates a marketplace where publishers offer ad inventory and advertisers bid on placements. So as an ad PM, you build products either from the supply side or demand side or the tools that help the two coexist. For example, if you're a PM on the demand side, your customers will be advertisers and you'll need to think about their needs, like helping them be able to provide the right assets to build an advertising creative. At the same time, keep in mind that end users, like readers of a new site, are the users of the ad. So you'll want to ensure you're building an experience that's helpful for them to do things like learn about deals from a brand. You may work on either side, but keep in mind that an ads marketplace will only succeed if both sides are healthy. So ultimately, you'll care about both. Here, you'll need domain-specific expertise in ads, but with enough time, you'll pick it up. You'll also work pretty closely with sales teams and account specialists, and these are cross-functional teammates that might not be commonly found in other PM roles. Next, we'll talk about B2B enterprise product managers. But before we do that, I do want to say if you're enjoying this video on different kind of PMs, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe so you can stay tuned for our future videos on acing your PM interview. These lessons we'll be uploading will be the same kind of lessons you'll get in private coaching, which can cost hundreds of dollars per hour. So doing these things is really just a free way to show support. Thank you in advance, and let's keep going. B2B PM. The B2B PM role is similar to the role of an ads PM because your customer is a business. So you'll need to understand the needs and goals of the business you're serving. As a B2B PM, you may be selling security solutions, customer support solutions, or marketing solutions as examples. Since you'll be working on an enterprise product, it's likely your release schedule is gonna be longer and you might need to understand more complex pricing models. B2B PMs work pretty closely with sales teams to understand the needs of potential customers and develop custom solutions. One large customer could be the source of a good chunk of your revenue. So you might need to weigh trade-offs of building features just for them versus the many other smaller customers you have. And finally, you might attend conferences or give talks to evangelize your product, which are always fun to do. Platform PM. As a platform PM, you'll work on developing a platform that enables other products or services to be built on top of it. This includes marketplace infrastructure, like the DoorDash order platform, a payments team, or a customer support tool. Your customers will be clients of the platform you're building, which could be external customers, or other internal teams. 
Either way, you'll want to ensure that the platform is scalable and achieves the desired business outcomes. The challenge here is going to be synthesizing their needs and trading off against what's good for the platform in the long run. In other words, you're going to want your clients to succeed on the platform, but you know that you can't say yes to every single feature request. As an example, if you're building a notifications platform on LinkedIn, many teams within LinkedIn will want to send notifications because they want to get in front of more users. But as a platform PM, you have the responsibility to set guidelines on when and for what reasons notifications should be sent. Technical PM. Both PMs and technical PMs can have technical backgrounds and both might work with engineers on a day-to-day -day basis. However, technical PMs will be much more focused on the development and delivery of the technology itself, such as the algorithms and research models. You'll work very closely with engineers and researchers to develop the underlying tech, and then work with a consumer PM to take this technology to market. In this role, you'll need domain-specific expertise on the tech you're building. For example, it wouldn't really make sense for a machine learning PM who is developing algorithms within an engineering and research team if they don't have an ML background. Now, a subset of technical PMs would be a research PM. A research PM works with researchers to build models, and then they'll be working with consumer PMs to bring their team's work to life outside the lab. Basically, you'll be building cool technology and then going to find ways for your technology to help the company make money. Data PM. Data PMs are responsible for making sure that the right people can leverage the right data for their work. You'll work closely with engineering and data science teams to do this. For examples might include building analytics and insights tools like Google Analytics or Looker, or you might even be building an internal HR tool to let leadership know which employees might be flight risks. Data PMs must have a deep understanding of data science and analytics, as well as the underlying pipelines that make it all work. Growth PM. As a growth PM, you're in charge of taking an existing product and driving the metrics your team cares about the most, like user adoption, engagement, and retention. For example, if you're a growth PM on the iCloud team, you might be in charge of how Apple would grow paid signups. So to do this, you might test a variety of tactics like introductory pricing, notification campaigns, and bundling. While many PM roles work with experimentation, your role will rely on experimentation more so than others while having a grasp of user behavior. And that concludes this video. Now, whether you're just starting out in your PM role or you're hoping to transition into another PM position, I hope this video helped you understand the different kind of PMs. Good luck in your upcoming interview. And if you found this Liftoff PM video valuable, consider joining our community by clicking the join button below. By joining, you'll unlock valuable PM interview lessons, get access to exclusive posts, and be a part of a private community of PMs preparing for interviews. These lessons give you the same material students get when they pay for private coaching, which can cost hundreds of dollars per hour. Keep up the great work. I can't wait to see what you accomplish, and I'll see you in the next Liftoff PM lesson.